So today I'm going to be taking a look at this Thorn uh, Metal Halide Floodlight that I purchased yesterday night uh, for the whopping sum of £5. Now this contains a 400 watt metal halide lamp as you can just about see below there. There's a bit of condensation on the glass panel. But all, all in all it looks from a pretty good nick. It came with that and then like a full size bracket which I put somewhere but now I can't remember where I put it. But um, so it can be mounted onto a pole and then it just came with a load of flex cable wired rather interestingly onto an old MK plug. So now I'm just going to take the four screws off of this so we can take a look at the ballast igniter and the lamp in more detail and then we can progress on to sort of run up tests and the rabbit is very interested by this. Right, so now I've taken the cover off, you can see that there was just condensation on the screen there. Um, we could just wipe it off. And we can see the label here now. So it's an area flood, 400 watt, high E40 with a 740 lamp. Although it doesn't come with an original lamp, I don't think. But then if we go down into here, and you'll be able to see it on the camera but it has a BLV top light lamp in it which is a high neutral white German 095 and yeah then Germany and then this is the ballast compartment so if we just start off with the igniter here it's a Tridonic Atco ZRM 6 ESB which brought sodium lamps up from 100 to 400 watt and metal halides from 35 to 400. It's a three wire igniter. And if we just go down to the ballast here, it's going to be quite hard to get a perspective, but I don't really want to take the ballast out. Um, so if we just try and. Uh, but it's a tridonic again, um, 400 watt for sodium lamps. Um, and as you can probably see, it's fairly big and composes most of the weight of this lantern. So I guess now all this calls for is a run-up, but just to note the reflect isn't like made up of millions of little mirrors. It's just kind of made from a flat plate of aluminium. And the rabbits once again getting quite interested by all this, but um well I'll have to lock him away um, so that it's safe when we switch this thing on. So right, the lantern is now mounted in place and the reason the image looks so dark is because I've got both ND filters switched on so that you can see the light starts up without me having to constantly jump around with exposure too much. So there we go. Powering up now. So this will just go through all the conventional Metal halide lamp startup procedures. And you see, I'm just dimming the picture down here so you can see the arc a little bit better. I mean, already it's pretty dark, pretty bright, and it hasn't even been on for very long. So, this is going to end up being quite a bright lamp. Don't worry about the water that's on the thing, I'll just evaporate off in a minute. Because I mean, this is <laughs> this is already beginning to get pretty bright in there. Um, to the degree, I think I'm even going to just drop the exposure even more. In fact, the brightness of it is pretty astonishing. It's still got it's still a little bit green, but boy, the brightness is just absolutely stunning. And it's going to look like it's getting brighter and dimmer because I've got such a fast shutter speed on the camera to try and keep the brightness under control. And obviously it is going to change colour quite a lot as well. So I just drop that down. So you can see that a bit better now. I mean, the brightness of that is just incredible. I mean, this room is pretty bright because I mean, I've got um, I've got four thirty-six watt flashing tubes in here, but you can see that compared to the floodlight, they're absolutely nothing. And this is actually quite bright to look at. I tell you, 
It's really, really bright. Kind of it's quite searing in a way. I mean, the colour of light is actually also also pretty good as well. I'll we'll just bring that up. You can. Well, the white balance is on the camera has gone a little bit off, but if we just. It is rendering things like reds, greens, other green over there. It's rendering colours very, very well. Um, so, all in all, it does look very much like a 740 lamp, which is as it was sold to be. But I guess up now, now we've seen that, we can try a lamp of rather different colour and production quality as well. So this is... Um, it's a KX branded, so effectively unbranded for all intents and purposes. 400 watt linear sodium lamp. Uh, a lamp where the arc tube isn't even straight. So that's not very good. So just switch this off safely. And then we can progress to put that lamp in it and see how much brighter the ceiling in here can, can become really. Yeah, it's going to take quite a long time for that to cool down enough for me to touch it. That's right, the, X, the XK lamp is now mounted in the holder. It took quite a lot of persuasion to get it in there. So let's just fire it up now. We'll just plug that in the socket sufficiently. So there we go. Just doing the completely it's just going to do a normal sodium warm up so I'll probably just speed through this a little bit Timbers, that is bright, that is very bright. Camera's white balance has gone a little bit off, but that's to be expected because it's a sodium amount. I'm just going to really look up. The brightness of it is pretty incredible, but obviously, the colour rendition is not anywhere near as good as with the metal halo lamp. Although, obviously, the bench, the stool there, does look fairly good colour rendering wise because it's also being lit up by the fluorescence in here but I mean that is one pretty bright lamp I've got down there but you can see the colour's actually a little bit better now it's fully warmed up but it is perhaps more orange than normal sodium lamps I would, I would say but I mean that is that is one pretty bright lamp I mean I had to wince like mad to be able to look into it 